good day everyone. So for this day, I will not be really conducting any academic lectures whatsoever, but rather I I would be beginning my first um first sub segment of my channel, which is of course entitled Here's My Take. So in the Here's My Take in the Here's My Take sub uh, sub segment, I would aim to give my most genuine opinion, ay, my most genuine opinions without even actually planning or actually writing them down. So essentially, I would be basing on my mere experiences and of course my educated opinions on certain matters and certain issues that actually take up the trend in certain periods of time. So, that being said, I'd like to start this segment off by discussing matters on what I think about online classes. So, ultimately as a teacher, I am actually compelled, or not necessarily actually compelled, I'm actually... I'm actually having this initiative to provide online content for most of my students, essentially because of the quarantine measures that actually have been implemented here in the Philippines. So, with that, I actually, I actually refrain myself from from making just PowerPoints. I actually don't really approve of just relying on PowerPoint presentations, just relying on lecture notes. I per actually prefer to conduct videos like these because in the process of that, at the very least, I'm already providing the students with the presence of the teacher that actually discusses the content and of course ensures that they are ultimately active in a lot of platforms. So that's my attempt in beginning my online classes or I don't really want to refer to the series of my videos as online classes. Rather, I'd like to refer to them as lect simply lecture videos. Because essentially, by doing so, I'm already giving the freedom and the leeway for the students in terms of whether they want to access my, uh, whether they want to access my content or not. Where depends on the convenience that they have, depends on their accessibility and whatnot. So, uh, in terms of the matters on online classes, I've, I've actually been faced by a lot of different, uh, by a lot of differences in opinion. So. There are actually those who claim that online classes can and is indeed a necessary uh, a necessary impetus for the transformation of the educational system that sears through that sears through the cyber realm. But I think, or essentially as the op the opposition thinks, they basically stand to a certain point that the online classes need to explore first numerous matters and numerous issues that actually comes that actually comes from how one is going to access the online content in the first place. So that being said, I'd like to refer this discussion to the following. So ultimately online learning, the idea of the virtual classroom or the idea of integrating education and teaching in general or the act of pedagogy itself is coming from the idea of ubiquitous learning. So ubiquitous, we refer to that word as always there, always flex uh, flexible material, regardless of whatever you are, regardless of what wherever you are, regardless of whatever your learning medium is, etc., etc. There are already various and flexible ways of providing online content to most of the students, especially for those who actually pursue homeschooling, who actually pursue online classes in the first place in terms of universities, other colleges that actually adapted these. So that's one thing that I'd like to refer for, for the general idea of online classes. It's basically a, it's basically an idea that stems from the principle of ubiquitous learning. So what I think about that is I need we actually need to determine a certain boundary in terms of deciding what is rendered as an online class and what is rendered as what is rendered as learning material uh, learning material or essentially online learning material because in terms of the medium of delivery there is in fact a major difference so i'd like to ponder i'd like to ponder on certain aspects in terms of how and why online classes are viewed negatively or essentially has a mixed view of opinions once it uh, and once it was actually implemented in such a third world country like the Philippines so first things first I'd like to refer to the access uh, the accessibility issues the idea that online classes in the first place needs 
the student to actually provide himself or herself with a cell phone or a laptop is by far contrasting to the social reality that exists in a third world country like the Philippines. Because ultimately, if you're going to talk about technological advances, you actually need to point out the accessibility of certain people, depending on social class, whether they have access to cell phones, whether they have access to laptops, whether they have access to other gadgets like iPads and, and whatnot. So, in terms of accessibility, I might say, or rather I am indeed saying, that not everyone indeed has the same rate of accessibility toward, towards, the, towards the online learning material. Let's say, for example, I actually work at a private institution, a private educational institution that, that by far I'm not really going to name here. So, in that private institution, um, I, actually, I actually received a lot of comments from certain students saying that they only have they only have their cell phones they only have their they only have their they only have free data or they don't necessarily have inter in, they don't necessarily have internet connection in the first in, in the first place so my initial thoughts were my initial thoughts to be honest was that in the first place there were they were the ones who actually enrolled in a private school so they in the first place need to be informed prior to that that the certain private school actually renders and makes use of online classes or virtual classrooms. So we're talking about the private we're talking about the private school here, which is by far has the reputation of rendering of catering, um, let's say middle class to elite type of families. But in the context here in the Philippines, the majority of the students they actually have, or essentially the majority of the students that the private educational institution I'm working for is by far coming from those who are recipients of the voucher system. The voucher system is by far the government's initiative, the Philippine government's initiative, to provide educational opportunities for those who would want to pursue senior high school. Because essentially, here in the Philippines, our public school systems are already being filled up by a lot, and of course, masses and masses of students. So. The government actually resorted to the government actually resorted to making use of the private sector. So once they made use of the private sector, they referred to most of the private schools in terms of being direct recipients of students with voucher grants. So in the voucher grants, the students are entitled with certain discounts for the tuition fee, ranging from ranging from 14,500 pesos to 17,500 pesos. Or, if I'm not mistaken, it could even go as high as 22,500 pesos. So, ultimately, the idea that even private institutions are already already reputed as elite and middle-class families as patronized, even though they have that reputation, still, there are... Um, there are a certain majority of those who come from the marginalized sector, and therefore, it's a matter of social status. So, once we bring the matter of social status here, then the accessibility issue is actually magnified. It's actually magnified in the idea of online classes. Because in the first place, if you belong to the marginalized sector, most probably you're not, the pers- you're not really the type of person that expects that is expected to have an iPhone. You're not really the type of person who is expected to have an eye tech, to have a high tech phone. So at most, at most, most uh, at most, uh, most students that are belonging in the marginalized sector don't necessarily have the means to provide themselves much less of transportation allowances because essentially, those the their parents are those who belong to those who struggle, who suffer from minimum wage who suffer from unemployment, who suffer from the lack of job decency in the country, and whatnot. So therefore, accessibility towards the online content is magnified given the social status that cannot be denied even by private institutions. Because the moment that there has been an initiative for public-private partnerships, the private institutions, of course, have already exposed themselves to diversifying their community, not limited to middle class and elite class families, but rather they already started to they already started to integrate the marginalized families, of course, uh, the marginalized families in the process of doing so. 
So, with that being said, accessibility issues is indeed one of the major issues that needs to be addressed. That needs to be addressed when it comes to the discussion of online learning content or online classes in general. Next, of course, is the conducivity or the idea of how the online classroom is actually conducive for learning. So, I'd like to take a, I'd like to take a personal narrative on this because I'm actually the type of person who prefers personal contact than texting. I don't really, I'm not really fond of texting. I'm not really fond of using, the, uh, I'm not really fond of using Messenger. I'm not really fond of using mobile devices when it comes to contacting other people, especially when I'm going to discuss something as serious as such. So, in terms of conducivity issues, there are indeed a lot of factors that might distract the student should they pursue online classes. Let's say, for example, I'm a student that belongs to a marginalized family, and yes, I, in, by some miracle, I provided myself with a cell phone. And of course, I cannot really remove I cannot really remove myself from the reality that I live most probably in urbanized uh, in urban in an urbanized city, which of course may appear as a single tenement style housing, not really those of mansion types and whatnot. So yes, I may provide myself with mobile data at the very least. So of course, if I was required by my teacher to participate in an online class. Most probably, I would be distracted given that I'm already in my household. My household that is most probably, that most probably has my siblings in it, that most probably ha not necessarily has the conducive environment for learning and whatnot. So, we can't really ask students to make certain adjustments in their households because primarily speaking, um, the type of households or the majority of households, especially in the metropolis area, is not necessarily that of standardized types. It's not necessarily those with decent with decent appearances. Rather, we actually begin looking at students, not necessarily, not necessarily as coming from rich house uh, coming from rich bungalow type uh, rich bungalow style houses, but rather coming from Essentially, most of them coming from the most of them coming from residential units. Most of them coming from rented units. Most of them coming from most of them coming from other matters that could even stem as far as going to slum areas. So, with that being said, we actually need to take into consideration the type of environment that the student actually has inside their own households. So, therefore. If you're going to conduct, uh, if you're going to conduct, uh, if you're going to conduct teaching in such an unstable scenario, like of course the household, then learning would not necessarily be met with the fullest of its intent. That's my take at the very least. So another, of course, is I've already elaborated on the issues of social status. So in social status, again, I'd like to refer to the notion that based on the social status would immediately define your accessibility to educational gadgets, your accessibility to the internet, your accessibility to phones, your accessibility to, inf to the information industry itself. So therefore, we actually need to integrate online classes based on the st based on the full uh, based on and in full consideration of the social status in which the student belongs to. So Next, of course, one of the students, or by far one of my most genuine students, actually complains of most of most teachers providing passive learning content. This is the part where it actually goes very heavy, and it actually pertains to the fault of those teachers who actually provide passive learning content. So let's say, for example, if you were to provide a PowerPoint presentation, or a PDF, uh, a PDF, or essentially just lecture notes from a Word file. Even this video itself, it's just passive learning content. Why? Because there are there are no interactions. Even if there are interactions, still the environment then does not necessarily provide to be conducive as such. So therefore, passive learning content as well as the conducivity issues are actually related with each other in the, in the process of in this discussion. Why? Because in terms of in terms of differentiating learning online learning content from online classes, we actually start to realize that regardless of the context, so long as there are no quality engagements with the student and teacher relationship, 
then the learning process is therefore rendered futile. That's my take at the very least. So, ultimately, I'd like to highlight the importance of the student, developing the student-teacher relationship. Why? Because in the online classes, there are no genuine connections. No genuine connections in terms of listening, no genuine connections in terms of reading, no, no genuine connections even, at, even by commitment. The academic commitment is by far one of the most important aspects that every teacher actually needs to consider when controlling the class, especially in, cla especially in terms of classroom management. Commitment needs to be, in the, uh, commitment needs to be, hmm, what's this word? Commitment needs to be appreciated by the students. And of course, we need to admit that this certain commitment is actually very blurry in times of the online and times where in online classes are actually taking place. So one way to look at the issue is of course to to make efforts at the very least for independent learning. Independent independent learning in which it actually promotes the student to learn based on what he wants to learn and based on what he needs in line with the curriculum and in line with the in line with the guidelines that the curriculum has already provided so i think that schools actually need to make an attempt to further understand the contextual situations of their students because primarily speaking the online classes even though it has a lot of potentials here in the country it does not really, it does not really translate into our entry towards technological advances rather it's appearing like an ambitious pursuit that divorces itself from social reality the blind coherence to online classes ultimately wants to suggest that we're just we're just doing it for the sake of the trend because it's it's practiced internationally, it's practiced in other places, it's practiced even in other fellow third world countries, so why not do the same? So I'd like to highlight the idea of concrete analysis based on concrete conditions. So that's the only thing that we need to consider when it comes to implementing certain decisions. Because as far as I'm concerned, following an international standard, as flashy as it can be, would only be rendered as dogma. Dogma is essentially just limited to theory, not necessarily applicable to actual practice. Therefore, it will, in the long run, be proven as irrelevant. So that's my general take in terms of that's my general take in terms of my views on the online classes. So if you somehow agree to most of my uh, if you somehow agree to most of my points, um, stay tuned to further content on the series of my sub segment, which is entitled. Uh, this is my uh, this is, uh, essentially I want to discuss on my takes and of course other opinions so if you have other conflicting opinions please do not be uh, please have the freedom to reach out to me if you have any other certain negative opinions don't hesitate to address them directly to me because I'm very I'm very positive when it comes to I'm very positive when, it's com when it comes to constructive criticism well, at most, I might be provided. I might be provided with, with new information that may influence myself. Uh, that may be serve as influence for me in the long run. So, I'd like to encourage a discussion, of course. And ultimately, if you have any certain interesting points, don't hesitate to leave comments down below. And if you think this video might trigger some certain interest points with those who think you might know. Please, by all means, share this video to those who think might be interested in it. And with that being said, subscribe to my channel, follow my I follow my Facebook I follow my Facebook page, and ultimately, thank you very much for listening. Stay safe and sanitary.